Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome Nancy. I'm so Thank excited you to for see you. coming and joining us today. Thank you. I promise it might be worth it. It might just be worth it. A uh, little different today. I'm not a great baker, but um, I've been traveling a bit and uh, in Provence, France, they have a very simple cake that's called an orangette. It's similar to a savarin, what they call um, just a round cake with a hole in the middle. It's, uh, it looks like a bit of an angel cake, but it's not. It's heavier, denser, but very, very moist and very, very yummy. And I think what makes it, what made me fall in love with it, I know, is that um, a large percentage of the batter consists of a homemade orange marmalade. I took a shortcut and made some ahead of time. It's so good. It's an organic orange. You want to make sure since you're eating the whole thing Thank you. that you get one that, that's not full of um, residual pesticides. Flour, sugar, cornstarch, baking powder, a bit of olive oil and eggs is all that's going into the batter. So we're going to start weighing that out. 120 grams of flour. Let's see if we can do that. We'll mix all the dry things first. 120. There is some sugar, 180. Now, where did you learn to make this cake, Esther? In France, in southern France, in uh, in Provence, I was fortunate to join Chef Eric at uh, he calls it cooking with class in a course um, in a in a beautiful beautiful Provence house, beautiful town, wonderful people. Uh, my dream kitchen, you know, the country setting, it's just the smell of lavender, it's the romantic dream yes. of France, and it was just like that, and, and those people were fantastic. Um, I have a little video that we took in the cooking school, it was just heavenly. And this was a dessert course um, after cooking fish, it was all about fish and seafood all day, just fantastic. So if you drive um, southern France and you drive the coastal roads, um, I'm a fan of the ocean, I can smell the salt in the air and I love, love, love it. I think it's so energizing. And then you end up in a place like this where you get their catches of the day, they come in two or three fresh. in the morning, fresh from the ocean. There's nothing like it. But then a little bit of sweet doesn't hurt either, I found out. <laughs> Cornstarch, something that I think I haven't seen an awful lot in baking. You bake, do you see that used? To thicken things, yes. In baking? Yeah, in, yeah not, I haven't not as much in cakes, though. Yeah, I, in, in maybe to thicken sauces, sauces yeah. and things like that. Yeah, but I haven't really seen that much. It seems to work. I don't understand the chemistry, but it does the job. 10 grams of baking powder. Make sure you press your Terra button in between your weighing or you have to do a lot of math. So we're going to whisk that just a little. You would be much better at this. No, I don't yeah. think so. I'm sure you'll be just awesome. <laughs> 5 grams of olive oil, 3 eggs, and we're just going to whisk a little bit before we put it in the batter. And I know there was one more thing going in here. Eggs, olive oil, yeah, the orange marmalade. Oh. Yeah. Oops. I find it interesting that this recipe is all in you weighing your components rather than, or your ingredients rather than one cup of. Then measuring, yeah. yeah. Well, this is Europe, we, um, yes. everything's pretty well measured in grams. Orange marmalade from one large orange. I know this was a little bit more, so we'll keep some back. And stir that in. I'll show you later how you get to that orange marmalade once we have finished cooking the one that's simmering on the oven right now. Oh, it comes now this is pretty thick, thick yeah. now, so I'm switching to my little helper over there, just to get that dough nice and smooth. Be a bit noisy for a sec. Here we go. And that's already it. And while I'm talking away here, I have a little cheese platter for you that's just oh, sitting with me, and I never nice. even offered. There you go. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Yeah, um, I will. A little bit of brie cheese, some again my obsession with the pearls, with the molecular cooking, some uh, lychee pearls. Lychee pearls. Yeah. 
They go oh, nice fabulous. with the brie cheese. Enjoy. And the goat cheese. Yes. So, and the goat Lovely. cheese. Yeah, both. Thank you. So, our batter is just about perfect. This is what that looks like. It's just nice. And look at this gorgeous color from the orange. Isn't that nice? So it'll be baking in a bit. Now, we probably all have some sort of pan uh, in the house that is shaped with a bit of a hole in the center. This is the traditional, of course, I had to go out and buy one in Provence while I was there. If you want to do nice garnishes and fillings after, you can, but then you need that hole. A hole in the middle. So you can it fill something a bunch in the pan. center. Right, yeah. yes. You do want to make sure you butter your pan very well. You also want to be careful not to overfill because there is baking powder in the, in the batter, so it'll rise quite a bit while it's baking. And just cover with the butter your edges too, just in case you have a little bit come close to the edge. Now this is really a two people job. It'll just settle about three quarters up your pan. Don't put any more in it. It'll, it'll bake over the edges and you'll have a big mess on your hand. So if I haven't forgotten anything, all we need to do is put it in the oven, wait 30 to 40 minutes, and then we're gonna pull it out and do some yummy things with it. There we go. While everything is cooking and baking, won't need a scale anymore. We can prep the fruits. I know everybody's going to be waiting to see how messy things get with the pomegranate. Isn't that hard to handle? That looks like an interesting knife, Esther. Never seen one like that. Yeah, you know what? Me neither. It's uh, something I found on that same trip. Um, they have all these beautiful shops with knives, collector knives, and I, I like knives uh, that I can use, utility knives. Um, I went in and asked because it has such a weird yeah. shape. Why would you have this cut up, uh, cut off blade? And what they told me is it's in memory of the Marines back into the wars when the captains hired their crews and all these sailors came on board knowing that they're going to be on that trip for three months, six months. Everybody was very aware that there's going to be tension and problems. And because we had a very mixed crowd, um, what they, the captains of the ships used to do is bring everybody on board and as they came in, get everybody's knife and break the tip off. So they were hoping to keep the violence down on the ships. They did that in memory of that. And if you turn it upside down, it almost kind of reminds you a bit of a ship. So, for garnish, you want to cut these hard ends off. We'll just keep it very simple. And we'll peel this baby. Now, it's never easy to not make a mess with pomegranate. But I found out and I'll do it on my countertop. It might, might be a little messy. I usually do that in my sink, but you won't be able to see it. Cut it in half. And then I'm just going to hold it under water so it's not going to be staining as bad. And once you start breaking it in pieces, I found out when you focus on pulling the peel off the berries, it's really hard, but if I change my mindset on pulling the berries off the peel, somehow that works better oh. for me. We won't need a lot. I can start smelling it. Can you smell mm -hmm. it? Um, the orange is almost done. We need a couple more minutes before we make the marmalade. We can start garnishing a cake. Um, I have made some ahead of time, so we can actually try to do different kinds of garnishes on it. Um, so this is the way the one came out in the more frilly pan. Not the original, it but it's, it looks very nice. Right. Yeah, it does, it does. A beautiful color too. So maybe we'll do 
Well, let's just first get our chocolate going. You want to do a water bath, so the water, the, uh, the chocolate melts gently. Uh, I believe you can do that in the microwave too. You must have tried that. What do you think? You have to be careful because you have yes? to keep stirring it and oh, it can burn. So it can burn mm -hmm. easily? Yeah. I don't use the microwave so much, so I haven't really tried that yet. Um, we're going to put 120 grams of dark chocolate in here and just a little bit of butter. And we're going to put that over a pot with boiling water. Make sure that's one thing I'm, I learned the hard way too. You don't overfill your face pan <laughs> with boiling water because it's unbelievable how quickly it can come up the sides and then get into your product. You don't want that. You don't want your sugar diluted with water. So as I'm saying that, Nancy, you have to help me watch when that starts boiling. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so what should we do? The whipping cream one, how about that? That would be lovely. Because that'll be easy. Um, whipping cream, fresh, no sugar added, just a nice plain whipping cream. And I'll fill that in the center. Keep in mind I'm not a baker, so that may be a little imperfect, but it's delicious anyway. And we're going to just put, I think I want to cut those a little smaller. Just put some fruit on top. You have to make sure that you know people well that you invite for this cake because you want to share that filling. <laughs> it looks so nice for the summer with all the fresh fruit. It is, it would be yeah, it is. And uh, the reason why I chose to show different versions is when you say summer, you, we want to try to be seasonal where we can. I think with all these variations possible, the amaretto to me, yes. that would almost be a Christmassy, Christmassy yeah, with touch the to it. Mm -hmm. yeah or um, in the spring raspberries, blueberries, you know. I would really like that. So we'll just plop those on there and in there randomly. Any kind of fruit will do. I like the uh, green and red contrast. Just a little bit of the pomegranate. And let's sprinkle some around. I wouldn't be insulted Lovely. if that was offered to me. I find that quite oh, pretty. Very Happy colors. Yes. Now we need a nice cup of coffee with this. So, there's one possibility what you can do with the orangette. And probably very quick. Mm -hmm. very and very quick. fast, really. Yeah. It's simple, easy. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not how the French planned it with the fruits, but that's what I like. Reality. <laughs> now the second one, how's our chocolate doing? Slowly melting away. I believe the orange is ready, so before we get into the second garnish, I'm just going to quickly show you how to make the orange marmalade. Get rid of that water. You want to probably let this sit for a few minutes because you can imagine it's very hot. And so it is. But if you're careful, you'll be okay. So. Since this has all been boiled for an hour now, you can use every single part of it. You see the internal temperature is very high. It's very hot to touch. And you just cut it in little pieces. I think the smaller you go, the less problems you're going to have in your um, food processor. Sometimes when there's not a whole lot of liquid, it doesn't want to catch. Right. So I might end up shaking my processor in rage. <laughs> Here we go. We needed some sugar with that. Let's 
right here. So in goes the orange. You may want to try this with or without the cake. I find um, just eating it as is not too bad at all, and I would put it on maybe on cream cheese. Oh, you know, good idea. Or why not put a little bit of that on, on the side with a chicken even. For sure. Right? Because it's mm -hmm. really just orange and orange goes so well with so many things. So let's see if we can get this going. And this is already it. And there you go. Gorgeous color. Oh, the smell. Oh, smell it. Oh, isn't that nice? So aromatic. It's lovely. Beautiful. Now, how much sugar did you put in there? 100 grams for one large organic orange. And again, like I said earlier, when, uh, when you try the oranges before you um, boil them, get an extra one, you may not need 100 grams, or you may want to add another 10 or 20 grams yes. if your orange is not quite as sweet to right. begin with. So this is as simple as, as your orange marmalade. marmalade. It takes minutes after it's boiled, and it just boils away happily all by itself anyway. So we got that done. Let's see how the chocolate is doing. Almost there. Couple more minutes. While that's finishing, we're going to get the other cake that I prepared. And this is now the actual um, shape out of the Savarin or the, um, the pan that I brought from Provence. Very simple, very plain. And we're going to use this to do the chocolate topping. I might want to do that on a cooling rack and onto a bit of paper. And once it's uh, all my good chocolate that I'm going to be dripping uh, has dripped off, we're going to put it on the on platter. Put that over here. There we go. This one would be my favorite. The, the one with the chocolate. You like chocolate, don't you? Oh, who doesn't? Actually, my son doesn't eat chocolate. Never has as a child, even never liked chocolate. And still doesn't to this day. Unusual to me. It's the only kid I know who doesn't like chocolate. It used to drive me insane for uh, Christmas um, little chocolate Santa Clauses or Easter bunnies. Yes. I drove all over the planet just to find maybe a white chocolate bunny because he would eat, he would that. eat that. Yep, but no dark chocolate. So we're good to go here. One yummy unsweetened nice chocolate. Very dark. Try to get that evenly all around. Well, the bad news is, Nancy, you're going to have to wait until it's a little cooler, but maybe not. So you can either just do it like that, or you can take a, a brush and try to get a little bit more of the chocolate around the outsides. What would you do? Would you just leave it or? I like it like that. Like yeah. that? We're just gonna. Now how did you make your candied orange peel? Um, 
I, uh, again, it's an organic orange, and I peel off with a with a peeler the skin, okay. just the outer skin, and try not to get any of the white on it because that's pretty bitter. Right. Um, and I made a, a sugar syrup, two parts sugar, one part water. You reduce that, you boil it down to um, well the right consistency where it starts to be almost stringy. Yes. And then um, put the orange peel in it and let it uh, simmer for, I had it in for maybe 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And then you dry it on a, on a cooling rack because the sugar kind of absorbs or, or sticks nicely to the, to the orange. And it is good, you should try some. Mm. There we go. I can manage to get this off the rack and onto the platter, I'd be really happy. There we go. I am not going to wipe these chocolate bits up because I know we're going to be eating them. So here's version number two. Not so bad either. Yes. Nice and shiny. And the fruity with the whipping cream one. And for number three, let me see. Ooh la! Perfect timing. That looks good to me. What do you think? I think so. I think it's done. I think so too. There we go. Now we can test if I buttered them. And properly or not. <laughs> should never do that on camera. <laughs> oh, oh, what if it doesn't come out? It will. It will? It will. You're the optimist? Yeah, no questions. Good, I trust you. All right, one, two, three. There we go. No damage done yet. Oh, I'm happy. I can feel it. Oh, no, look at that. There it is. Perfect. So this looks pretty good to me. While it's still hot and happy, we're going to do something experimental. We're going to be putting some amaretto right onto this beautiful cake. Nice and slow so it has time to absorb it. Mmm, this is going to be a 19 plus cake, yum. Nancy, that's the one we're going to taste after the show right. first. <laughs> How's that? You'd have to do that while it's warm, right? So mm -hmm. it's in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that might be enough. What do you think? You think so? A little more? A little more? Just a little. There we go. That cannot be bad. So... Now that's done, and it will just have one more minor topping, which we're going to look at when we come back. And here we go. I think the amaretto went in all the way. I can, you got it. Looks so nice. You got to just, nice. just take a little smell here. Oh, tempting! Mm -hmm. That smells so lovely. Okay, with let's the put that on a platter. <laughs> <laughs> and I think with all that beautiful liquor in there, all we need to add is a little bit of color. And I want to do that with a bit of icing sugar. I think. That'll be just fine. Isn't it amazing what a little bit of white mm -hmm. does? There we go. Which one are you going to try, Nancy? Oh, it's a hard decision. But I have to go with the chocolate. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me cut that. It looks so nice and shiny, doesn't it? It does. And I think it baked just perfect too.
That looks very so tiny. Lovely. It looks so very tiny. Thank you so much. And cut a few more pieces. Go ahead, I want to know. I want to know. Well, this was a very, very sweet episode, really. Nancy, thank you so much oh, for coming. My pleasure. Thank and you. staying and watching thank and you. enjoying, I hope, and I hope everybody else enjoyed it too. Thank you so much.